Dettol, that's a word we're all familiar with. Lysol, another such word. Hello and welcome to all of you to this very special uh, interview that I have here. I'm Suchetna Ray, editor of Outlook Business, and I have with me the man who's leading the company, that is Reckitt, the company behind giving us heritage brands such as Dettol, such as Lysol. All of us have stories around that. So join me in welcoming Lakshman Narasimhan, CEO of Reckitt. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thank you for having me. My first question to you, uh, what are your associations with the heritage brands that I just spoke about? Dettol, Lysol, Durex, these are like household names here. You know, Dettol's been in India since uh, 1936. Uh, I remember going to Hull in England and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a maritime source. So some ship from there probably carried it into India. We've had factories in India for, for decades and so Dettol's made here. Personally, um, you know, I am, um, uh, I, I grew up in Pune mm -hmm. and my brother was sick. Uh, he unfortunately passed away when I was six and he was eight. And when he was sick in the house, my mother relied on Dettol. So it's a brand I've known for years, ever since growing up, because we always used it in the house for disinfection and to ensure that people were safe. Apart from your heritage brands, another legacy of Reckitt is the kind of uh, work that you do as far as a society is concerned. You have ca great campaigns running in the space of nutrition, which is hugely successful in India. Do you look at replicating these success models globally? If you look at the programs we have, like for example, what uh, has been done in India really powerfully with Banega Swachh India, yes. uh, with what we do with Mission Pani in the case of Harpik, uh, and also what we do with um, you know, the Birds and Bees program mm -hmm. with Durex. Um, what we're really trying to get to is we as consumer companies have to drive behavior change mm -hmm. in society. And it's our responsibility to be able to do that. We know how to communicate with consumers. We know how to drive that kind of behavior change. We're doing that. And in places like India, hygiene obviously is a foundation for health. We've embraced that, and so Dettol Banega Swatch India is a campaign. We've run very similar things in various other parts of the world, and we continue to do so because it is the core foundation of building habits that make consumers, you know, in some ways adopt hygiene as the foundation for health, or that we educate people about Durex and ab about, um, you know, sex education mm -hmm. so they really understand what it means as, uh, uh, you know, as young people uh, as they're growing up. So it's clearly an important element of our overall brand building story. Sustainability was intrinsic to the ethos of Reckitt even before it became a buzzword sometime in 2015 after the Paris Accord. So are there uh, policy changes that you continue to make to keep in line with the climate summits and the deadlines that they set globally? So, you know, we as a company have embraced sustainability deeply. Uh, people may not appreciate how deep it is, but it is actually very deep. You know, we hit our carbon reduction goals of 66% reduction, which we had set for 2030. We achieved that this year. Uh, now, of course, we're changing the goals and taking it up even further. If you look at our, our record of uh, what we have, MSCI rates us as a double A on sustainability. Uh, we have a very strong sustainability score, higher than many of our peer competitors. And if you look at our climate plan, our climate plan gets us to 1.38 degrees Celsius. As you know, the Paris Accord says, we've got to be below 1.5 degrees Celsius. So we have in place the plans in order for us to do what we believe is appropriate, given all the different summits and accords and all of it that exist. But what is important for us is that it's not an add-on. It is, it's got to be embedded deeply in the business. Uh, we've got sustainability calculators in our innovation pipeline. And we have 30% of the products already today, heading to 50% of the products that will actually be much more sustainable uh, in just in the design, right in the way we do it. Uh, we've set aggressive goals, but we've got it embedded inside the company, in our operations, in our innovation, and importantly, increasingly so, in the way we communicate with our consumers. Our brand Finish around the world does a great job in helping people understand that the pre-wash that we do is a big waste of water. So if you use a washing machine and use a tab like Finish, it actually helps to save water. So we are using our brands, the, the platforms that we have, in order to drive behavior change in what we do. As far as the 17 SDGs are concerned, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which are the ones that you'll focus on specifically uh, in the run-up to 2030? 
every brand is anchored in some kind of a sustainable development goal. We have a breadth of brands, as you can well imagine. So we have a large number of these that we do cover. Not all of them, but several of them that we do cover. And it's really brand specific uh, in so many ways. And it's important for it to be authentic. Because I think the heart of this is that uh, you can sort of overdo this. Unless you're authentic, and it's really built into the design of the brand, it's built into your communications, and people believe what you do, then in that case, you know, it works, otherwise it doesn't. It actually brings me to my next question. For uh, many companies that we see in India, especially the FMCG companies, we know that sustainability, climate change, these have become buzzwords. So how do you ensure that it doesn't become an oversell and it is actually an organic extension of the brand? The, the key test is authenticity, mm -hmm. um, that we choose what we believe is right and that it's consistent with, with what the brand stands for. The other part is avoiding overreach. You know, we have a place, you know, we are humble. We know who we are, what role we play in people's lives. For us to communicate on things that are way beyond that is not something I either encourage or I actually frankly allow. We have to ensure that we are authentic all the way through. And we try our best to be so. It's not that we are perfect. You know, clearly we fail in some cases, but authenticity is really at the heart of this. I'll come to a few questions about uh, Reckitt uh, yes. and the business. Uh, so uh, in your LinkedIn uh, profile of Reckitt, it's written that you want to reach half the world by 2030. Which are the geographies which are focus areas for uh, the next few years? China, India and the US make up half our business. Right. Uh, so clearly that by itself gets you quite a large number of people in, in the mix. Um, we are resetting our Africa Middle East business. We believe there's a big opportunity, a large number of people there. We're also resetting our Latin American business as we go. Again, there's a, there's a big opportunity there as well. So my sense is that uh, you know, if you look at Europe, uh, Australia, uh, as well as the you know, ASEAN countries, we're also present in those countries. So um, we're looking to ensure that our brands are available in places where they're most relevant, handling the four big questions we know uh, that the world faces. How can hygiene be the foundation of health? How do we avoid um, uh, sexually transmitted infections, over one million uh, a day that are being uh, you know, transmitted. How do we ensure that we provide consumers with self-care solutions at a time when healthcare systems are under pressure? And how do we ensure that we have uh, specialized nutrition for children and for adults? These are big problems the world faces. And I think trying to solve that, having an ambition to reach half of them is the appropriate ambition that one must have. I have three quick fire questions for you. Which is uh, your favorite brand coming out of Reckitt? I have to say, you know, Dettol is one I have a deep affiliation to personally. But by the way, there are many brands in the world and you're a parent of multiple brands. So you can't just say it's, De it's Dettol but because my other people will feel that I didn't, uh, I didn't pay them enough attention. But you, but said, you can't oh. <laughs> take it back. Favorite city in India? My wife is from Bombay. Mm -hmm. I'm from Pune. Yeah. I like Pune. I'm just kidding, but I grew up in Bombay. I spent five years there too, but really Pune is where my heart is. It's where my dear, dearest friends are, mm -hmm. and it's where I spend time whenever I can. Your wife will understand. Which is the one city in India between Pune and Bombay again, because you mentioned both, which is, and one campaign which the city is crying out for? A record campaign. I think to be um, the Banega Swatch campaign, which mm -hmm. gets into schools mm -hmm. and really educates children mm -hmm. about behaviors is one that I would say we clearly embrace. Yeah. We have the World Toilet College in Aurangabad, which isn't far from Pune, by the way. Uh, but again, what we're doing there is we make a big difference to the lives of, uh, of the people who are cleaning toilets. Mm -hmm. And we think that's a mission that is, uh, that's got a lot of um, heart to it. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the Birds and Bees program is something that I know the schools would benefit from. So the way I think of this is this is just one program, although clearly hygiene has a massive relevance in every city that we go to. You know, we believe as Indians that cleanliness is next to godliness, and so it's got to be embedded in the kids and what they do. But we have multiple things we can stack on with that that actually would make the place a much better place to be. So there's nutrition, there is hygiene, uh, you have birds and bees, you have water. Which is the next campaign you think India needs if it has to uh, meet its sustainability goals? I think, first of all, I think these are big programs. We haven't reached all. I mean, we're reaching only 7 million people with the birds and bees campaign at this point in time. We're in half the primary schools, 600,000 uh, plus schools. I'd like it to be all the schools. So the programs we have are big, but they, and they're really great. But we've got to ensure that they get to um, 
get pretty much to all the people that need them as opposed to you know me adding on new campaigns okay final question you've lived around the world in america in uh, in uk you've also lived in your other parts of europe as well india where you grew up which is the city you'll retire in oh this is a very hard question you know uh my wife asks me this question all the time and uh I, the answer is i don't really know um we are in our uh this 24th home in uh, 29 years <laughs> of marriage so um and it's the same marriage but different home uh but you know it's uh, it's one we will you know we will uh, we will sort of come to mm -hmm. uh this decide i know one thing for sure is i do intend to spend time in pune okay uh but i do intend to of course my kids are in america so i'll have to be you know there too so hopefully i'm able to do that okay one final question do you watch bollywood which is your favorite film oh uh <laughs> You know, I do like Chennai Express. It's quite, okay. uh, it's quite a funny movie. I loved Three, Three Idiots. Okay. I thought it had a lot of meaning. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lakshman, for taking the time out. I'm sure you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. We were talking to Lakshman Narsimhan, CEO, Rekid. Thanks for watching.